It's still about 18 months until Jesus would be crucified. Opposition has increased towards him, but he is still free to move around. And he comes up to Jerusalem, possibly for the autumn feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, and goes out the sheep gate just north of the temple to the pool of Bethesda. Bethesda means house of mercy. And he is coming to a place where there is a great multitude of sick people gathered around the pool in various shelters that are there, waiting for the water to be stirred. The testimony of scripture is that when the water was stirred by an angel, the first person to get into the water was healed. So it is a place of hope and a place of mercy. Jesus surveys the people who are there and identifies a man whose problem goes back for 38 years. This man is still hopeful of healing, even though he has been in that condition for so long a period of time. Now, he maybe he's comfortable in that position. So Jesus asks him, Do you want to be made well? And the man explains, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. That day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share from John chapter 5 verses 6 to 17, and investigate this encounter between Jesus and the Jews, resulting from the fact that Jesus heals a man on what happens to be a Sabbath. Now Jesus is not about disrupting society, but he is about providing an opportunity for people to discover the truth about himself. And so he doesn't heal all the people who are at the pool, but he selects one person who can bear a testimony to him and heals this person. Now this person didn't know who Jesus was at all. It was just a normal long day waiting for the water to be stirred and a stranger came up to him and said, do you want to be made well? And the man said, well, there's no one here to help me. Maybe he looked at Jesus, would you help me? But he knew that if someone was going to help, they had to hang around because one never knew when the water would be stirred up. But the stranger had just said, take up your bed and walk. And without really thinking about what he was doing, just the way the man spoke, he did what he was told and found he was able to pick up his bed and walk. And so he did. But because it was the Sabbath, he stood out like a sore thumb. He was carrying his bedroll into the city on the Sabbath and he was right beside the temple. So the Jews immediately said, Hey, you! It's the Sabbath! It's not lawful for you to carry your bed! What was the man to do? He simply answered, The person who made me well said, Take up your bed and walk. He wasn't told where to go. Obviously, he would go to the home of somebody he knew, maybe his own home. He would have known somebody in the city to go to. But to go into the city, he had to come past the temple. And so he was spotted. And he's deflected 
the accusation, saying, Well, I was told to take up my bed and walk. Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? For to instruct someone to take up their bed was obviously going against the rules of society. But the man didn't know who had spoken to him. He didn't know it was Jesus. There was just a crowd of people. This man came later into the temple. When consummized, he came to give thanks to God for the new liberty and freedom that he had, to acknowledge that God had been good to him. And while there, Jesus comes up to him and quietly says to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. It's interesting that Jesus immediately warns the man against sinning. He's been given a new opportunity in life. Do not go back to the lifestyle he had 38 years previously. And he is to make the most of it. It's also suggesting that his condition was as the result of his own sin. Now, it's not necessary that every bad condition that we have is a result of our own sin. Jesus will make that plain in chapter 9 with respect to a blind person. But evidently in this case, the man was sinning, which caused his infirmity. And as he comes before the Lord, he acknowledges the Lord's mercy, but he is confronted again with his sin. And Jesus tells him, you leave your sin behind. Because if you don't, something worse will happen to you. Of course, he's going to go on to say in this chapter that if you believe in the Lord Jesus, there is no condemnation. But if you do not believe, he has already said you are condemned already because you have not believed. And those who are condemned will definitely be in a much worse condition. Well, this man now knew who it was who spoke to him, and he went and told the authorities, the Jews. It was Jesus who had made him well. Now he would do this because he wanted to honour the one who had healed him. But it also gave fuel for Jesus' enemies. For we're told, for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. God's people have been persecuted Throughout history, those who are following Jesus are persecuted because they bear the name of Jesus. It's the hatred of Jesus that brings persecution. So they had attacked the man, the man had deflected it to Jesus, and they persecuted Jesus. They harassed him, and we're told, in fact, they sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. The Jews had made made the Sabbath the key law to be followed. You shall do no work on the Sabbath. Now, definitely, God had instructed the people not to do their regular work on the Sabbath. They were to have a day of rest, because God had rested after creation. It was a principle, because men are too inclined to be focused on making money and overworking. But God designed us to have a balanced life with a bit of space and time for rest. But Jesus' response was fascinating. My father has been working until now, and I have been working. He's pointing out the fact that even though God has commanded people to rest on the Sabbath, yet God has not rested. Psalm 121 says, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Okay, he rested on the seventh day of creation, but he is continually working to sustain and maintain this world. And Jesus, as the Son of God, is also working at that task of maintaining the world. Healing this man is just part of the task that the Father gave his Son, the Lord Jesus They persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath.